and humidifiers were they left on. Mm -hmm. Same thing happened. Something ha went wrong. You're not there. Right. I'm, I'm a big guy with my with, at home. I have a private home. My wife and my older children that don't want to leave are using the <laughs> dryer. <laughs> Three, 24 is the youngest. Okay. The bottom line is they use the dryer. They use the the, the clothes washer, mm -hmm. and. Who and my wife is a champion at this. She likes to go out to the store. She left the clothes in the dryer. Not a good, good practice. Yeah. Anything goes wrong, you're not there. Right. All right? You have detectives that would go off and let you know. Now, maybe you're not a firefighter, but maybe it's just something that as easy as what you should do in, that ca in, in, in certain situations. That may be just as simple as the lint filter. Mm -hmm. All right, that's a big thing with clothes dryers, by the way, in the home. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Lint filters, and that's the major reason. They won't work sometimes with heating the clothes, but the fire risk is great. Any kind of... Um, well, that's because people, a lot of times, don't clean them out and forget to clean them once it goes through the cycle, picking up all that lint. Right, and what happens, what happens with that machine when that, is, when that lint builds up? Oh, it'll it's automatically hot. contain all of the heat and it won't expand out or it won't bend out. That's right. That's what, that's the, the, what, what happens. It builds up <coughs> heat. Excuse me. And the next thing you know, it gets so hot where combustion occurs. Same thing with air conditioners. When you, when you have the fins on the side, mm -hmm. people start putting things in to stop the uh, heat from coming in the sides. They yeah. put, you know, they seal the window. If you're, if you're not careful and you cover the, the fins, eventually, that air conditioner is going to overheat. Might be to the point you have a fire, but it also might be to the point where it's also not functioning the way it should. Now, that's not the important part. The part is the fire. But the bottom line is that's what happens. Do you mean those covers on the outside of the air conditioner? Yeah, like the, the fins. The part that the, hangs out the window or the sides? The, or the sides more. The back, the too. The back, too, where the coils and things are, but the right. sides. You know, what happens when the air conditioner is working you'll see from those areas you'll get heat that comes out, mm -hmm. yeah. gets right. vented. Same way as a, as a clothes dryer where all the heat and whatnot gets vented to the outside. Mm -hmm. And if it's not venting out, it's going somewhere, building up, and that's what happens. Now, a lot of problems in the, in the kitchen besides um, unattended cooking is oil-based fires. Mm -hmm. All right, one thing we never use with oil, if the oil starts igniting, is what? Water. 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 We know that. Now, one thing you, you could do very easily is the first thing is shutting the gas off, stop the heating process. The second thing, most people don't even keep it out, is covers, right? We're going to use that cover as a, as a means of stopping the air from, from keeping that fire going. We're excluding the air from <coughs> covering. Now, we could talk about um, extinguishes. No, you're close. Sam. Was it bacon powder? Bacon <coughs> soda. 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 The way to remember it is bacon soda, bacon powder. Soda, the S for safety, not powder. Powder is like has like a, a well, that's talc what I in it. It's in yeah, I know, you, I know. But I, I usually keep one on the stove. Yeah, but you know what? Mm -hmm. you, just people that, and you do. No, I'm mm -hmm. sure you do. But some people just to clarify for everybody. Right, thank you. The bacon, yeah, the bacon powder can cause it to, uh -huh. you know. Start like like a little conflagration, like a little puff. Mm -hmm. Flour mills are very volatile. It has a little bit of talc, a flour, or mm -hmm. something in the flour. But inside the pans, the baking soda, my mm -hmm. old box, mm -hmm. right? It's what a deodorizer. Most people have it in the home. They have it in the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With the top open as a deodorizer, yeah. mm -hmm. you can use this for many different things. I'm sure you know. You could use it for a whitening of clothes when you want to whiten when you won't do laundry. Mm -hmm. You can actually, somebody tells me you can use this for clogged, like for drains. Mm -hmm. You mix this yeah. with uh, white Sanica. vinegar. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. See, I learned something too mm -hmm. recently. <laughs> you can use this, they say, this is funny, you can use it for tarnish with silver, mm -hmm. right, clean it. But they also said you can use it to brush your teeth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't understand why you would brush your teeth with something that takes the tarnish off silver. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like take your plaque, or, uh, your they, plaque off, but also off your teeth. teeth. Right. So, but the truth is, bacon soda, this is a multi-purpose extinguisher. This is basically sodium bicarbonate. It's the same chemical that's inside a BC extinguisher. 
So if you have something going on with oil, whether it's in the oven, whether it's on the stove top, the bare minimum, shut the gas. Before you put this cover on, if you want to use it as a shield, you go get it, you know where it is. Mm -hmm. Use it as a shield and you use this so it doesn't flare up on you. You throw it in, you lob it in, and then with, with a gloved hand, of course, right, you get a mitt, and then you put the cover on if you want, okay? Then if something goes wrong, you leave everything as is, you leave the kitchen area, you close the door, which is very important no matter what, closing the door to your apartment, you get your family outside, you close the door to the kitchen. Same thing after you get your family out and close the door behind you. Fireproof buildings, fire doors, two to three hour fire ratings. All right, that's one of the reasons why in fireproof high-rise buildings like that fire, like I was saying before, if you, were, you weren't here, they left the door open, fire and smoke got into the hallway, two gentlemen that were trying to get out that should have stayed in their apartment and mm -hmm. killed. Okay? Um, when, I, when I took my CERT training, uh, we had uh, experience with fire extinguisher. It's like if you don't know how to use that extinguisher, you can Make do it more harm than good. Right. And, um, and then the other thing they mentioned was to always be sure that you're that your back is to the Absolutely. Door. If, if this was the yeah. stove in front of me, I would want to be where you are to right. start. Mm -hmm. Because if something goes wrong, I don't I have to pass to this out. mess mm -hmm. to get out. Very good point. I was going to get to it, but that's good. I'm glad you brought it up. And uh, also, there was an acronym, how to use this properly, without even knowing how to use a word that you can follow the letters. Yeah, there was. Pass. Uh, that's it. It's pass. That's right. <laughs> The pin is in the handle, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. To stop it from yes. being expelled out mm -hmm. by accident or somebody that's up to no good. Mm -hmm. So the P would be to pull that pin, breaking the tab. Yep. All right, P and pass. Now the A would be with the hose, if it had it, or with the, with the uh, nozzle, is to aim, right? A for aim. If this was the pan and the fire is growing up, you have to aim at the, at the base, not at the top. That's where the product is. Another thing you have to keep in mind that people don't use these, don't know, is if you aim it directly into that oil, directly in, you're going to splash it all onto the wall and all over the place You make the problem worse. So you have to aim at the base, but you have to sort of lob it in, okay? You start off from six to eight, ten feet back, and you work your way in with the first S now is squeeze. Now you're ready to, exp to expel the product, squeeze. And as you're squeezing, the second S is what? Sweep side to side. Right as you're working your way in, it'll give you a little bit of, uh, of, of you know chemical, but it's not going to give you too much. So it's going to be a you know maybe uh, 45 seconds, a minute or so before it's done. So you work your way in. You don't want to start. Sometimes, sometimes I don't even know what this bulletin says, but some say 20 feet. If you look at some of this, I don't know what this this one says eight feet, so it's good. Some say 20, but you don't have that much product to start going in slow from 20 feet. So I say, like I said, about 10 feet, four to six, eight, 10 feet. Okay? Now, this, if you didn't know anything, you could look at the pictorial. There's a pictorial on here, A, B, and C. They're all there, no lines through it. Okay? Sometimes the extinguisher says A, B, C on it, the letters. Sometimes it'll be a tag that says multi-purpose. They're the same, synonymous, A, B, C, multi-purpose. Okay? The letters that you see here, or sometimes written, is the type of fires that the extinguisher is good for in the bulletin. Class A fire is your basic, ordinary paper, you know, household, wood, paper, trash, okay? That's an A fire. Usually when you have an A extinguisher only, like you'll see in schools now, you don't see them too often. They're the big silver cans that are water only. Now, one thing you know about extinguishers with water is what? You don't use it on oil fires, which is B oils, liquids, greases, and you don't use it on class C, electrical. Now, if this has ABC on it, or the pictorial, no line, or multi-purpose, you can use it for all three class fires. All right? So be clear with that. The bacon soda itself, in the home or anywhere else, if you have it, you can use the same way you use this. So if you had it in the home, you might just have um, an outlet that you see some now. You don't want to play firefighter, but you can throw baking soda on it. It will be okay. You don't want to start opening up anything unless you have that, you know, expertise or anything like that. But the bottom line is calling us from a safe spot, getting somebody to do it.
you're going to make an initial attempt, maybe you can do it at the same time. If you're with your wife, um, husband, whatever, and you say, call 911 from outside, I'm going to do this and I'm going to join you, get the kids out ready to go if something goes wrong. Or get whoever. All right? I know people that have started looking for things before they leave. When they, I don't know if you've, has anybody been involved in fires here before? Yeah. All right, was it anything of consequence? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you know mm -hmm. the deal then. I won't even have to go. Mm -hmm. Fire goes from a small fire yeah. to a big fire pretty quick. Mm -hmm. yeah. You usually nowadays with the chemicals, not the chemicals, with the materials they're using now, as opposed to yesteryear, fires will go from um, the beginning stage to not sustainable to life in three minutes or, or so. So you don't have much time from the time you learn about something. All right? Electric fires and things like that will burn even more accurate. That stuff is not good for you, even if it's a wisp. All right? Any kind of like manholes. I see people when they're out in the street with all the lines and cables underneath and everything. Even firefighters. It's ridiculous to me. They're standing around. Now, I know they have a job to do, but they're not going down the manhole. It's Con Ed's job. It really is. We're actually not supposed to even put anything in that manhole until Con Ed directs us to do it. They now have a new gel they, they use, you know, to uh, fire strike or something. But it's still supposed to be done with Con Ed supervised it. What we do do is go in surrounded areas, check for levels of CO and any extension. That's what we do. But guys will be there breathing that stuff in. Mm -hmm. Or even when you're walking by and, and you see a manhole go, stay away from that 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 uh, that uh, smoke uh, mm -hmm. spray. Or they have a PCB sometimes mm -hmm. and some of this stuff that you're using, oils to cool things and whatnot. That electric stuff and why is burning is not good for you. Okay? Now, we went through this. These, in the home, I have one in my house. What I advocate in the home is to use it, maybe you have one in the kitchen area, have it right outside the kitchen so you can get it, you make sure you're on the right side of where you, where you uh, are going to use it. A lot of people in their places of, of residence, they have uh, to pass the kitchen and uh, areas like that in order to get out. So now, even if you're in a fireproof building, now it's in your apartment, it doesn't make a difference what the building is. If the fire is in your apartment, you have to put your escape plan. So you don't want to have to uh, pass a room that's extended past your, your front door, going to your front door. Usually the kitchens are pretty much in the vicinity of that front door, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, now fireproof building, you still have to get out fires in your apartment. You could use this as a means to, to beat back something to escape. I, I laugh, or I try to get a laugh sometimes. I have an extinguisher. I have one in the kitchen area, it's, you know, outside, but I have another one, and it's a, it's a water extinguisher but it's a bigger one that will give me more time. Where I have it, and they get a laugh, I have it in my bedroom. And I, and I say, listen, don't get no laugh. My, it's not like anything hot is going on in my bedroom these days. <laughs> but the bottom line is, the bottom line is, I says, I use it as a means if I have to get out of my house mm -hmm. that I can go into my closet. As soon as something goes on, or if I have to get down low, because I see smoke in my eye, I grab that extinguisher, I'll grab my wife along with me, or I go to have to, you know, my you know, the kids are out all night, who comes home? If I have to get across the hallway and something's coming up, I could use it to beat it back down. Enough that I can get a window, get onto a setback out the window, things like that. If you, rec if you have fire escapes and things like that, I recommend you get used to opening those windows. Sometimes with fire escape windows, gates, things like that, you have to be using them when there's not a fire. Don't wait till a fire occurs. Mm -hmm. Doors, things like that. Okay, if you live in apartments, people sometimes block exits and things like that. Not a good idea. The thing about seeing something and saying something, very important. There's a number I'll give you. You can store this number. It's the Fire Prevention Complaint Desk. If I don't like that word complaint, I like to use the word concern. You can remain anonymous with this number. If you see something you don't know or something you do know, you call that number, you get a name on who you're talking to, and you get a file number that you can go back to dispositions. If you use it, it's a Metro Tech number. It's a 718 number. It's 999-2541. See, somebody's going to take So if you need it, you can get it from them. But you can call up to 999-2541, okay? 718. 718, Metro Tech. All right, that's where you have to go if you need CFFs and things like that. You go to Metro Tech Center. 
Mm. All right, so it's very important. And if you just have a question on legalities, there, the inspectors that will answer it, now they, the word's getting out because I give it at every inspection, at every inspection, at every uh, thing I talk about. People are calling. So now you may get an answering machine. All right, you may. Call back. You can leave a message. You don't have to leave your name. You can call back, and you should call back, get a full person, and speak to them. All right? What they do is they send the, the concern out to the local firehouse. They fax it, and they follow it up with a call for a name. The same way you should get a name. I hate leave my house. Yeah, I called. Well, who'd you speak to? I don't know. No good. Okay? No good. You can't hold anybody responsible for... for for calling them back and say, listen, I left this with you. We don't know anything about it. You can't do that. Mm -hmm. All right, so very important. Um, let's see. Go ahead. What is Metro Tech? Metro Tech Center is Flatbush Avenue, really, and it's like that uh, complex down there that they, uh, right off Flatbush and Tillery. Mm -hmm. All right? They have 911 operators that operate out of there, fire department. Mm -hmm. It's by, uh, what is this school there? Cooper Union, maybe? West Not Cooper Union. Western House High School, but there's also the college there. I think it's part of Cooper Union, maybe. Oh. That might be there. LIU is across the street. LIU yeah, is there. It's a, a the hub there yeah. for, for different things. But, uh, and I forgot the name of the other school, but it doesn't make a difference. But the bottom line is it has a bunch of different things. You go there if you need a certificate of fitness. Whether people, you need those, have you ever heard the term certificate of fitness? It's a certificate you need if you're operating interior alarms. You have to have a, a certificate that uh, uh, declares that you, you know, you take an exam and you can operate an interior alarm. A uh, fire guard, if a, if a residence needs a fire guard. Anybody that's involved with this college that in the fire ring, the marshals and stuff have to have CFFs. If you're a fire safety director, CFFs, certificate of fitness. You have to take, you have to first have maybe have qualifications, then you have to get the CFF testing and be qualified. That's run by the fire department. By the fire department, yeah. And it's another way, believe it or not, of it's a fee that goes along with it. Yeah. Fuel oil permits for, for uh, depending on the uh, on the size of um, you know burners and tanks that you need require uh, permits, and it's a fee going you know a tax. Let's call it a tax, right? Mm -hmm. exactly. Just like anything else. Um, <coughs> I mean, so we're calling them to to do what? If you need, if you have any clarification you need, or if you see something in your residence or even in uh, a building. If you can't abate it by speaking to somebody and saying, you know what, and you, in the building you keep blocking this exit okay. or something, or they keep that door is chopped open, mm -hmm. that's not good. If you have to leave your apartment or, or if you're in the hall by accident, that door is closed. You have a chance, even if you don't notice a fire in your building because it's stopping smoke spread. In that apartment or in your apartment, if you have a fire and you're in a fireproof building, what those people should have did, those two men, they should have put towels underneath their door, mm -hmm. wet them. Seal off, if you have masking tape or any kind of tape, seal off the door frame. Call, let them know you're in the apartment. I don't know where the fire is, but it's in the building. Okay, stay where you are. Maybe go to a window. That's what happened in that hallway yesterday, with the or two days ago with the police officer. The woman said she looked out, she saw flames in the hallway from the mattress out there. What did she do? She put something underneath the, the door. She said everything... It was almost like, and we may have been, someplace where she picked this up, or mm -hmm. she read, she was doing the right thing. She went to a back room, mm -hmm. she called 911, they told her to stay there, she opened the window. As long as nothing adverse is happening, you can open the window a little bit maybe. Mm -hmm. if, you, if it's no problem, you keep it closed. Mm -hmm. Don't take any glass out because you can't replace broken glass. If something happens that it starts coming out a window underneath you and then laps into your room, you'll be in a, in a predicament. So that's the the um, mm -hmm. the advantage there. Now candles are starting to become um, popular, right? We use them for different reasons. We use them for um, religious reasons. We use them for holidays and scent, aroma. Mm -hmm. Some people we even use them for romance still. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. The truth is. I'm not doing. I'm not such a bad guy. My wife likes to hold my hand sometimes yeah. and watch a movie mm -hmm. and light a candle. Mm -hmm. But you know what? I have a candle on the bottom of this basket here that's melted over, and it had a newspaper burned into it. Mm -hmm. It's an old. You can hardly see it. But the bottom line is, I was watching it as we, you know, mm -hmm. for days, and it was burning down. It started melting because of the wind. 
the bottom line is they're dangerous. They're, they're not supposed to be left. This is even a flameless one. This is recommended. They have ones. It's, don't look at the, 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 the wax. It is wax. It melted because it was in my trunk. So it was a nice candle. You can buy big ones. Mm -hmm. They have ones that give all scent. Mm -hmm. yeah. Battery operated. Mm -hmm. And I told those for use it for romance, the romance is not going to change with a battery operated. <laughs> not going to make no difference with the romance, whether it's real or not. All right? I told, and you know what? I have them in my house. They give off scent everything. Mm -hmm. And they have different sizes, shapes, colors, scents. It's fantastic. All right? No more can uh, danger of candle fire. Battery operated. All right? Increasing in the amount of fires we have that happen. Now, overloaded outlets, back to electric again. Okay? These devices, when you buy electric stuff, they should be UL rated. Right? You know what UL is? Anybody not know? Raise your hand if you don't know what UL is. UL is Underwriters Lab. They're um, an agency that tests any kind of electric product to safety standards. Usually you'll see, I have, actually I have it here. It's a circle with UL, mm -hmm. round, right ma'am? All right, they're smaller, I blew it up. But the bottom line is it meets the, the, the bare sta safety standards. If you buy electric products on a street corner, extension cords, things like that, no good. They're starting to trademark infringe these. Just like if you go into Manhattan and you find a Gucci bag for $10, you know it's either stolen or bogus, like uh, fake, right? So. I tell my, I mean, but the thing is, if you're buying a bag that looks good, so be it. If you're buying an electric product that's inferior, it means your life possibly. Now, you have to buy these reputable place, UL. Okay. Now, when you start plugging into a wall outlet and you use this, or you use a power strip, or you use a surge suppressor, it's not giving you more power. Okay, that's the, the main thing to keep in mind. You have to know a little bit about your system. I mean, I'm not an electrician, but it's not giving you more power. It's giving you more places to plug things into. When you start seeing too many of these things, whether it's a power strip, which is okay, right? Now, a power strip by nature is better than this device because this device alone doesn't have no shutoff. Okay, this has a shutoff. Right? So when it senses an overload, it may shut down. The truth is, that fire that happened in Manhattan where those two gentlemen should have left, that was started by a power strip that was faulty. You can't overload these either. So it's best, yeah, if you're plugging things in that have no electric draw, your cell phone charger, an alarm clock, things like that, not going to make a difference. But if you plug something in that's a little more powerful, no good, all right? Extension cords. <coughs> Extension cords. <coughs> the wiring. When you start seeing these things, if you look at all the wires around here, these wires are bent and turned. You know, you see things happening. The coating cracks. They dry out. So if you see any kind of cords with any kind of nicks and damages, people, there are a lot of people... I know, because my father was probably one of them. He used to get out electric tape and wrap it up and yep. things like that. Mm -hmm. But it's not really a safe thing. Because inside the wiring, where the electric goes from point A to point B, is not on what you see here. It's on the copper that's inside these wires. It travels. It's just like if you take your body and you, in the summertime you work so hard, you overheat. Without being hydrated to cool, keep your body temperature down, you overheat, you'll get heat stroke eventually. So the same thing with this, when the wiring gets so hot, it transfers the heat to the wiring and melts. And This is the example of an extension cord that was with something plugged in that was too, too hot for this extension cord. The coating melted and ripped open, and if you can see the shriveled up piece of copper right here, it basically destroyed this extension cord, okay? Anytime you have a cord and it's warm to 